Good morning, everybody, and welcome to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show dedicated to playing games exactly as the developers intended. In Rockman, you play as a gentle little helper robot turned unstoppable death machine who steals the combat techniques of everybody he murders. And for once, we're not throwing a wrench in the works. We're taking the easy way out and using our entire arsenal to blast through a normal, casual playthrough of the game. Just, you know, an absolutely 100% perfect casual playthrough with zero room for error. Can you beat Rockman without getting hit? For convenience, we're playing the Mega Man Legacy Collection version of Rockman, which is functionally near identical to the original Famicom release. And for accuracy, only features originally present in the Famicom version of the game are allowed, meaning no auto-fire and certainly no save states. If we get hit at any point in the entire game, we have to go all the way back to the title screen. Otherwise, there are no limits. Everything possible within the game on original Famicom hardware is allowed. With that out of the way, let's get this run started. We start out the game with absolutely nothing other than the puny Rockbuster, but we get one new weapon after each of the six bosses. Additionally, there's a special mobility weapon in Elecman stage, requiring the super arm earned from Gutsman, which is central to our strategy. To get this ability safely, we're gonna be heading to Gutsman and Cutman stages first. For a no damage run, baby strats are your best friend. Never put yourself in danger unless absolutely necessary, and when you do, have a consistent plan ready before you jump in. Tiptoe forward, let an enemy spawn, take them out, and continue. You never have to fight more than one enemy at once in Gutsman stage, so even Buster only, it should be a cakewalk. There are, however, two moments where we'll be praying for good RNG. This jumping robot will either slowly approach you and get stuck like an idiot, or make a mad dash at you like a blood-crazed maniac. The former is preferable. Next is Gutsman himself. There's no special technique to fighting him, just dodge his attacks, keep laying down shots when his invulnerability runs out, and cry when he decides to jump left. Cutman's stage is the easiest in the game. What little RNG you find here can't do much to end your run. Near the end of the level, though, are these infinitely respawning orange flying pods. Rather than playing it safe here, you're gonna want to run through as fast as possible. It'll be a bit scary, but if you keep moving, you'll always make it to the next screen with 100% consistency. Cutman, while easy to tank, is a bit scary in a no damage run, so we're resorting to cheese. Run straight forward off the rocks, stop in front of Cutman, fire, and pause. Unpause, fire, unpause, fire, repeat, repeat, repeat. Remember, I said everything is allowed, no matter how cheap. The developers forgot to stop invulnerability timers when the game is paused, allowing the player to effectively end the boss's invulnerability instantaneously. Since Cutman has a giant pair of scissors on his head, he's weak to the rock buster and can be infinitely staggered until his inevitable demise. Next up is is a Lechman. Now that we have Rolling Cutter, clearing the path ahead gets a bit more manageable and you barely need to worry about weapon energy. Even so, a Lechman stage is going to be a tense climb, with precise timing and movement necessary to safely dodge these green electric enemies. You can either shoot them with absurdly precise timing, or climb slightly up the moment they fire to squeeze in between their shots. Whatever you do, rush as fast as possible. The less time you spend on these screens, the better. Near the end of the stage, you'll finally get your greasy hands on the magnet beam. Now you don't even have to bother fighting the RNG bots, just walk over them and watch as they pathetically chase you to their doom. Before entering Elecman's room, switch to Rolling Cutter and fire once to the right, thus ensuring you face the proper direction. Throw Rolling Cutter at the exact moment the boss battle begins and Elecman will get caught inside. Boss weapons don't disappear on contact with an enemy, allowing you to pause trick Elecman to death instantly. Iceman stage just might be the scariest in the main six, but now you've got Thunderbeam to ease your fears. Thunderbeam kills most enemies in one hit, fires in three directions, has a gigantic hitbox, and barely even uses weapon energy, making it our go-to for almost any situation. Use it to mop up every enemy in your way until reaching this endless chasm of randomly generated pain. Normally, you try to jump across on these terrifying bullet-spewing platforms, but that's hard. So no. Instead, run across the entire chasm with Magnet Beam, waiting as late as you think you can get away with in between shots. Time them out far enough and you'll have enough screen height to waltz across the entire pit. The rest of the stage, and Iceman himself, is a cakewalk. With Iceman dead, you already know what time it is. The two main gimmicks of Fireman stage are the rising and falling flame enemies and flame geysers. The falling enemy 
locations are random, so always be prepared for a quick thunder beam. The flame geysers, meanwhile, are completely harmless if you freeze them with Ice Slasher. When you reach the bullet bill, jump above the screen right when a bullet bill is about to respawn. If you're above the screen, they'll assume you gave up and go home after a job well done. With the bullet bills gone, you can calmly walk through the fire and flames to reach Fireman. Fire Ice Slasher at the exact moment the battle begins and start some intense pausing. You need to perform the trick perfectly more times in a row than ever before. Too fast and Fireman won't take damage. Too slow and both he and the ice shot will move just a bit further away from each other. But cheat absolutely perfectly and Fireman's justice is cooked. The final stage of the initial six is Bomb Man, in a stage requiring super fast reaction time and a ton of tricky aerial maneuvers. Note that you can cheese the first Sniper Joe with Ice Slasher fairly easily. Even if he blocks the ice with his shield, he'll decide to be frozen the instant he tries to jump or shoot. Later is the return of the annoying, infinitely respawning orange ball, which we can now thankfully glitch out of existence. Freeze it with Ice Slasher and run it off screen before it unfreezes. It will never respawn again, making the rest of your journey totally safe. Freeze and roll and cut the next two Sniper Joes and make your way inside the boss door. Now this is gonna look really scary and really stupid, but you can skip the whole ladder section by hugging the right wall. Don't worry, it's 100% consist- WHAT?! Like I was saying, nothing is 100% consistent and I'm an idiot, so cheat with Thunderbeam like a little sissy baby. Hold right when entering Bomb Man's room and just as the battle begins. He'll jump over you, letting you pause trick him to death as he lands. With all six main stages completed, we're heading into the Wily levels. Weapon energy depletion carries between stages from now on, so we're not going to be able to rely on the magnet beam in every room. Rather than using it to skip over the first RNG bots, use Ice Slasher on them in midair so you can run under. On the second screen, equip Thunderbeam and be prepared to fire right before climbing up the ladder. With that RNG, you'll have almost no time to react to the frogs above. Use the spawn glitch on the bullet bill in the next room. After spawn glitching the bullet bill, you'll be climbing into the scariest room in the entire game. A gauntlet of RNG platforms firing willy-nilly and moving in whatever direction they think you'll hate. Do not drop off the ladder from the prior screen, otherwise you're guaranteed to take damage. Climb down instead, wait for the first bullets to go by, jump down, fire magnet beam, pray, and improvise. There's no telling which way these guys are gonna move, so run across and scream as much as you need until you make it to the other side, hopefully unscathed. But the pain is only getting started. After refilling your energy, it's time for the Yellow Devil boss fight. I don't have any fancy tricks to dodge this guy's attacks, and he can only be damaged after the first volley. I hope you've already played this game a couple dozen times, because you're gonna need his attack pattern embedded in your skull. Dodge his eye pellet, fire out Thunderbeam, and pause it right when it's intersecting with Yellow Devil's eye. Thunderbeam unfortunately acts kind of wonky when using the pause trick. Everything gets a bit desynced, and there's so many objects on screen, you'll have to wait a bit longer to get a successful hit in. All hope isn't lost if you don't kill him on the first go, but for the love of Enoch King, please kill him on the first go! Any more than that is bad for your heart! Wily Stage 2 doesn't feature much new. Thunder Beam what you can kill, and Magnet Beam over what you can't. We'll need to refight Cut Man and Elec Man too. Cut Man is identical, but Elec Man now requires us to wait until the last possible moment to hit him with Rolling Cutter right before he gets close enough to shoot. After climbing down the final lap, or you'll enter the copy robot boss fight. Stare him in the eye and get ready for a one-on-one -on -one grudge match like the world's never before seen. And by that I mean a grudge match between an incessantly flailing chicken and Rockman taking his name a little bit too literally. Copy Robot will always use the same weapon you do, no matter how stupid of a choice you make. Equip Super Arm like an idiot, and Copy Robot will be legally obligated to run around in circles endlessly trying to pick up rocks where there are none to be found. That's only step one though, we do still need to find a way to safely kill him. When you press the fire button, Copy Robot randomly jumps either to the left or right. Get him to jump to the right edge of the screen, switch to Firestorm, and pause glitch Copy Robot into oblivion. Wily Stage 3 is thankfully a short and easy one. When you get to the water tunnel, stand in place and fire buster shots in a rhythm until the bullet bills show up, at which point you should start jumping over. And pray the penguins don't turn into missing no like they did for me, it makes things get real scary. 
Wu Omps luckily doesn't require anything more complicated than flawless casual strats. Hug the bottom left corner, finish three phases with standard buster shots, then cheese the rest with super arm. You finally made it to Wily Stage 4, the final stop on your murderous rampage for peace. The green electric enemies make a return, but thankfully they're way easier to take out now that we have Thunderbeam and Firestorm. It's an easy run through Wily's Gutsman action figure collection to the Yashichi, refilling all our weapon energy in time for the upcoming boss gauntlet. Bomb Man, Fire Man, and Ice Man are still cakewalks, but Gutsman still has a bit of troublesome RNG. Run to slightly past the third girder in the background, jump when Gutsman is about to land, and throw a bomb at the top of your jump. A bomb thrown from here will be in just the right position, so Gutsman and should get hit by its explosion no matter what RNG he gives you. Wily's entire robotic army has now been dismantled, with one exception. His greatest creation, the ultimate combat robot, Wily Machine Number 1. Immediately Firestorm pause trick the first phase and get ready for our final pause. Against all sound reasoning and logic, wait a few seconds before shooting Wily. If you do it too soon, there will be too many objects on screen, making the pause trick take longer and thus become way harder to perform with perfect timing. But if you do get that absolutely perfect timing, Wily will be stunned by our complete disregard for honor and lose the fight before he can fire a single shot. With Wily begging for mercy, the Rockman 1 Mr. Perfect Run is mission done. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, complaints in the Splatoon 1 run that I didn't like do the complete alliteration. So there you go. My debt to society is fulfilled. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including Andrew Seibert, Mrs. Seckman, Eric Flynn, Les Lamb, R.B. Drock, David 20 Covers, Solano, Mr. Harry Wonka, Alexander Botkin, Chris Nate, Mason 2K, Anyu, Little Sissy Baby Who Runs Away, Sally Airy, Ross Clark, Ikrira, JD, Jez, Robert B. Brachier, Citrus Lush, Zaina Bane, King Tom Nook, BCR Main Sound, JJ McKnight, Joshua Bradbury, Cool Monkey 666, Vincent Hall, Bass Singer 313, Plasma Phoenix, Adam M, Yellow Alert, I'm going to unban Julius Zeno, and Anon42. One last note. This time, I did the run live on stream. If you want to watch the entire playthrough or join the stream chat for fun later, links are in the description. And as always, let me know how much this video sucks and how I can improve in the comments below. Everlasting peace for watching and get out of my house.